I've always wondered why Paul McCartney would never take a DNA test when people questioned if the real Paul had died. Well, believe it or not, he did take a DNA test, and I will reveal the result at the end of this video. I saw the Netflix film Paul McCartney is Dead a few years ago. I found it interesting, but also hard to believe. That is, till I started to do my own research quite recently. I will try to show you a collection of evidence from the film and many different sources in this short video. The Netflix video called The New Paul Fall, while the other videos gave him the name of Billy Shepard. I even saw interviews of Billy's father and pictures of Billy. To make it easier, I will just call Paul after 1967, the new Paul. Let me start with the most convincing arguments on Paul's identity. Please look at these two pictures. Look at the chin, the nose and the mouth. Do you know that Paul after 1967 is two inches taller than Paul in 1966? And check out the clear difference in eye color between these two pictures. You have to admit that these pictures can be quite disturbing if you are a Beatles fan. But occasionally people past puberty do grow an inch or two and the feature analysis sounded a little too challenging for our untrained eyes. But what if I show you the changes in ear and teeth? Some features of the human body can be altered, such as the position and slope of the teeth. Carlesi, who is the one who did the facial comparison used here, noticed that the teeth configurations for Paul and Fall do not match and even found evidence of poorly planned dental surgery that revealed more than it concealed. In Paul's mouth, his upper right canine tooth is pushed out of its normal position because there is not enough room in his jaw for all his teeth to fit properly. In New Paul's mouth, that same canine tooth is also crooked, but there is plenty of room in his jaw for all of his teeth. Since no other teeth are pushing against the crooked tooth, how did that tooth become crooked? Carlesi then concludes that the crooked tooth in New Paul's mouth was the result of a dental operation to simulate the crooked tooth in Paul's mouth. I actually found a really clear picture of Paul. The only problem is my lack of dental knowledge. I posted it here so you can compare and see if the analysis makes any sense. As for the features, I want to share with you the expert's facial analysis. Gavazzini noticed a common feature of New Paul's early photos that is not seen in his recent photos. A dark area shadowing the external corner of the left eye. That area now shows something halfway between a scar and something that resembles skin that was stretched as a consequence of cosmetic surgery, or as Gavazzini suggests, of an imperfect cosmetic surgery. Photos show that New Paul's head is more oblong than Paul's head. Gavazzini pointed out that some of the early printed photos of New Paul must have been compressed in height in order to make his head appear shorter and more rounded. He said his conclusion is inescapable because the shape of the skull of an adult cannot be altered. He said there was a simple trick for stretching or compressing photos during the printing process in those days before computer photo editing became available. So it would have been very easy for them to do this trick. Carlesi pointed out that the line separating New Paul's lips is much wider, to the point that it was obvious even when New Paul grew a mustache, 
perhaps in an attempt to hide that detail. Lips can be inflated and increased in volume, but the wideness of their separating line can be altered only to a small extent. More interesting is the position, relative to the skull, of the point where the nose detaches from the face. Because it cannot be modified by surgery, according to Carlesi, these points for Paul and New Paul are considerably different. One of the most talked about feature differences is the eye color. Paul has dark brown eyes, but New Paul seemed to have much, much lighter hazel eyes. As you can see in these pictures, I know eye color can change, so I searched on the web. I found a few people claiming their eye color changed from brown to hazel, but I also found quite a few doctors saying that's impossible. So what do you think? In Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club, some suggested the cover looked like a funeral scene with a guitar representing Paul. And when you put Lonely Heart Club in front of a mirror, you actually can read it as 11 nine, he died. That was actually the date Paul supposedly was killed in a car accident. But it actually was also the date John Lennon met Yoko, the beginning of the end to the Beatles. Pretty strange, right? On the Magical Mystery Tour album, there are claims that using a mirrored image of the album cover you can see a phone number. And Paul wore a walrus suit, which means he is a corpse. And at the end of the Strawberry Field song, you can hear, I buried Paul. Although some people say it really is cranberry sauce. Either one makes little sense. It should be more like strawberry pie or something like that, right? Then on the White Album, some people say New Paul's soaking in a bathtub looks more like Paul's decapitated head floating in blood. And the song Glass Onion is British slang for a casket. And if you play the song Revolution 9 backwards, you will hear the word Turn Me On Dead Man. This was not denied even by the critics. Is that a mere coincidence? And why would people be playing it backwards? You can see New Paul and David Letterman making fun about himself being called dead. Wouldn't everyone wonder, why doesn't he just do a DNA test? But he never did. Hmm, until he got a court order for a DNA test. Miss Bettina Krishpin of Germany claimed herself to be Paul's daughter. It happened when he had a two-year relationship with her mother, Erica Ubers, between 1960 to 62. And the case wouldn't get much attention if not for the fact that Sir McCartney's lawyer paid Miss Ubers 16,000 German marks to buy her silence. And Paul's name was on the birth certificate as the father to Miss Krishpin. Bettina's mom kept the secret till her daughter was 12, and when she reached adult age, she demanded a DNA test. And to her mother's surprise, there was no match, even though her mother said she was 100% faithful to Paul. Ms. Ubers was so sure the DNA sample was from a body double that they filed complaints with the prosecutor. They believed there is no way she's not Paul's daughter. Strange twist, right? Why won't Paul's brother volunteer for a DNA test and put all doubts to rest? There is no way a body double can fool his parents, his brother, and his girlfriend, Jane Ash. Jane Ash was with Paul from 1965 till 1968. The two even engaged in 1967 before Jane announced their breakup on TV in 1968. Why didn't she know? 
or she broke up because she knew and refused to continue playing the game. How about the McCarty family? Why didn't they come forward? Could it be to protect the Beatles' popularity? Could it be to protect their interest if they were not named in Paul's will? Or maybe there's not even a will. If Paul knew he had a kid, wouldn't most of his wealth go to his daughter? The daughter that lived on Germany's social welfare system, that Paul's attorney had to reimburse $30,000 back in the 60s. Another big question is about the songs after 1967. New Paul's songs post-1967, although different in style from the prior songs, are still outstanding and loved. But experts point out that he has used much more complicated composition than the self-taught music like the old Paul did. And he played guitar with the right hand and has rarely sang in public songs like Yesterday. According to the Billy Theory, Billy is also a talented musician and songwriter. He was a body double before 1966 for Paul, but has since disappeared. If the new Paul is really Billy, then Billy did something quite special for many of the Beatles fans. He has given them a Paul that has yet to depart from them. And he did a great job in continuing his legacy and music. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift, usually. This time, yesterday is a mystery, tomorrow can be a history, I mean if we get the gift of truth. Thanks for watching. This is Ken Peters at MysteryDecoders.com. I want to end today's video with a short song clip from Paul's song, Yesterday. I said something wrong, now I long for yesterday.